Hey everyone, Mitch coming up from the Commander's Core Studio. Welcome to the show. So, Richard Garfield is the creator of Magic. You know, that game that you and I both love, the game that millions of people out there enjoy playing, the game that, well, I talk about on a daily basis. <laughs> and of course, Richard Garfield has a lot of great insights and perhaps one of the best insights that I have heard from him essentially is, well, a recent one that he shared at uh, Magic 30th, uh, you know, that event back, you know, in uh, what is October uh, out in Vegas, essentially, where the Wizards is like, celebrate us, our birthday, awesome, awesome, us, 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 30th anniversary, cool, all that stuff. Uh, but yeah, <laughs> uh, Richard Garfield actually did a conversation uh, there, and I believe it was like a webcast, essentially, but yeah, but basically kind of, you know, just answer some questions, you know, talked about, you know, the history of magic and that kind of stuff. And uh, I'll make sure I link uh, it in the description below, but I will link a very specific, uh, you know, time in that uh, conversation. And you can, of course, watch the whole thing, but I do recommend listening to what Richard Garfield has to say about a very specific thing. And let me just read this quote, uh, because I think it's very important these days, especially with everything that's going on with, you know, Wizards and Hasbro and uh, yeah, the uh, the giant, um, let's just say uh, problem uh, that is happening right now and uh, the the, um, the kind of, uh, you know, headbutting right now with the community at this point uh, over, you know, certain things. And so Richard Garfield had this to say when asked a question. He said, trying hard to keep focused on this idea that this is a game first and if you treat it as a collectible first, then you are not doing your game players any favors. And uh, to that, many people started cheering because yeah, that is a very important distinction. You know, when you're saying, okay, what is the focus of magic? What the focus of magic should be? And Richard Garfield is saying, um, hey, yeah, you need to focus on the game first and the collectability later. You don't focus on the, you know, collectability first. You don't treat it as a collectible. You treat it as a game. When you are treating it as a collectible, you are not doing your game players any favors. You are actively hurting the game. And that is definitely something that, well, many Magic players out there, including myself, have been feeling lately. I mean, over the past two years, the absurd amount of procs that have come out, the absurd amount of just cards that have come out, well, I mean, it just definitely shows, in my opinion, that Wizards you know, and Hasbro are focusing more so on that collectability because they're like, oh, collectability equals profitability. How can we get the most out of this? How can we get the most money out of this? And just, I think they really need to listen to the creator of Magic when it comes to this one because, yeah, um, Magic needs to change directions at this point uh, to head in a better direction. I mean, I did bring this up on another episode, but yeah, thank you, Magic Data Science, for getting these numbers. Uh, but... Yeah, uh, posted on Twitter, uh, apparently, in 2022. We had 10,498 card variations printed. That's 14.7% of all cards in Magic history. 15% essentially of the cards printed in a single year. And this is a 30-year-old game. Ridiculous. And yeah, Wizards, uh, you know, CEO tries to claim that they're not overprinting things. Really. Uh, 425 new commanders, uh, you know, 25%. I already did an episode on that too. And, uh, yeah, uh, 18% of rules text. Yeah, that's a lot of rules text as well. But yeah, the, the kind of focus again, when it comes to, you know, the, the proof is in the pudding essentially, right? Where, you know, Richard Garfield's like, you need to not focus on collectability first. You need to focus on the gameplay first. Uh, if you're printing 15% of, you know, cards essentially in one year, that's, um, maybe a bit too much of a focus on, you know, card variations and, uh, you know, not a focus on gameplay. I mean... Looking to next year, it doesn't look like things are going to slow down. I think I already showed this one off as well, but yeah, uh, 10 different variations of the new Elishnorn. 10. Now, is that a focus on gameplay or collectability? I don't know. I mean, there's, you're putting out a lot of resources to get all these different variations of cards, all of these different collectible aspects of the game. I remember back when there was only one. I remember back when uh, they finally introduced foils. And uh, yeah, that was a long time ago. I think it was like back in like Scourge or something. That was a long time ago. Maybe Tempest? I don't know. Someone let me know in the comments below. But yeah, the amount of collectability for this game has gotten pretty ridiculous. Uh, and yeah, the amount of procs have gotten pretty ridiculous. Uh, yeah, th this uh, little chart just keeps getting passed around. <laughs> it's just, uh, 
it just always it, it just always surprises me again just with the a vast amount that have ha that have changed that have um, that have changed over the past you know 30 years essentially uh yeah if you look all the way back in 93 we had four products in a year essentially you know and that stayed very consistent up through 2000 you know 7 2008 essentially and then uh if you go to 2022 i mean absurd things really took off you know since like 20 you know 19 or so uh and this year basically going off the chart it is you know too big to show all that to show every single product that came out this year just an absurd amount and yeah 48 secret layers with that too so yeah uh, a little bit of focus on collectability uh, a lot of resources being dedicated to that and, and again justification for those decisions when it comes to what wizards has to say about that i mean mark rosewater head designer of wizards um on blogatog that's uh, mark's blog uh, you know, was asked, you know, the Walking Dead Secret Lair being best selling is such a poor argument that it hurts every time you use it against criticism against greed. And basically, you know, that's essentially what Wizard says, you know, like, oh, this did well, therefore it's good. And Mark Rosewater had this to say about that. We made a product that there was an audience that was interested in purchasing it and purchasing it, purchasing it. Why is this great? Just because something sells doesn't mean it's good. I mean, there are things that, you know, are going to be short term benefits versus, you know, long term sustainability. And, uh, you know, as Bank of America said, you are killing the golden goose. And people from the outside even see that as well that don't, you know, aren't invested in magic day in and day out. They're just like, uh, yeah, financially, these decisions don't make sense. Uh, I mean, they are trying to milk the player base for as much as they can recently. And yeah, that kind of collectability is the main way that they are doing it right now. So, um, yeah, I, I think, uh, you know, Wizards needs to listen to Richard Garfield. Uh, I think Wizards needs to listen to the community. Uh, I think they need to turn things around next year. Maybe they won't because, I mean, again, already we were saying like, oh, look at all these different cool variations. We got like 18 variations. Awesome. Sweet. Awesome. Yeah, collectible, 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 collectible. This version's very expensive. You should go buy this product because it has this version because it's very expensive. And I just hit my light. <laughs> uh, yeah, but basically they need to get back to what makes magic great. They need to focus on quality over quantity. They need to focus on, you know, long-term sustainability. They need to focus on what's best for the community long-term and not what is best for short-term profits. And they need to stop justifying their actions based on sales. Because that is just not at all how user experience works. That is not at all how a community built around a game works. You can say like, oh, people bought it, therefore cool. Sure, you don't know who bought the product anyway. I mean, like when it comes to certain things, certain products, certain collectible products, it was like, okay, people who are buying that product to go sell it on eBay, like the 30th anniversary edition. Same thing. It's just like, uh, wizards, stop it. Just stop it. So uh, again, just a big thank you to Richard Garfield for, for sharing this and saying it in such a public forum. Again, this was at Magic 30th out in Las Vegas, you know, Wizards event. And I'm sure at the time when, you know, this was said, the Wizards, you know, and the head honchos of Wizards like, oh, no, 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 don't, don't say that. Don't, whoa, whoa, whoa. I mean, I'm sure they didn't say it loud, but in their head, they're like, no. <laughs> Anyways, hopefully Wizards hear this, hears this and wakes up. I mean, if they're not going to listen to the community, are they going to listen to the creator of Magic? We'll see. So yeah, let me know in the comments below what your thoughts are on this though. And yeah, of course, as always, thanks again and have a good one. This show and episodes like this one are possible thanks to viewers like you. If you're looking for an easy way to help support this show, make sure that you like, share, and subscribe. Also hit that bell notification icon so you don't miss any new episodes. You can also go check out our playmats and other merchandise at thecommandersquarters.com. We also have a ton of brand new t-shirt designs in stock, so make sure you check out those as well. Another easy way to support this show is with our TCG Player affiliate links. So whether you're buying a deck or individual cards, you can use this general link right here or one in the description. And the final way that you can support this show is by supporting us directly by becoming a patron. There are many benefits to being a patron, and I truly couldn't do this without all their support.